Hey, how's it going everybody? In my previous video, I announced that I was going to be doing a Jazzmaster style guitar build and I'm pleased to announce that I have done exactly that and I'm going to reveal it to you in just a few seconds, the finished product. But before I get into that, I just want to say I'm breaking up this content into two separate videos. This one that you're watching right now, it's going to be the big reveal. I'm going to show you the, the finished product and then I'm going to talk about all the pieces and parts that I sourced to put in this guitar from the pickups to the tuners, everything. And then I'm going to talk about my impressions, if I'm happy with how it came out, if I came in over or under budget, that sort of thing. And then I'm going to play the guitar for you, show you how it sounds and uh, run it through a couple of the tones and things. Stick around for that just a second here. And in the second video, I'm going to talk about the process, all the steps that I took to make it happen from start to finish, and all the difficulties that I came up against and how I overcame those difficulties to make it what it is right now. So if you're into those kind of videos, definitely, definitely check that one out as well. Um, so sit back and relax and, and uh, let's, let's get on with the big reveal. Here we go. All right, so here we go with the big reveal. You guys ready? Let me introduce to you the newest member of my guitar family. I'm calling it the Jazz Meister. I'll explain that in a minute here. All right, there it is. So right from the get-go, I'm just going to say that my inspiration for this build was the Fender Venteras 60 Jazz Master. I saw that guitar and just fell in love with it. The color, it's called Ice Blue Metallic. The, uh, the color of the accessories, the, the pick guard, the painted headstock, everything. I just loved the look of that guitar. So I will freely admit without hesitation that that was my inspiration for, for this build, the color, everything. So that said, let's start talking about the pieces and parts that I bought to put into this guitar. I sourced everything from eBay and Reverb with the exception of the pickups, which I'll talk about in just a second here. Let's start off with the body. The body I purchased off of eBay from a company called Supratone, S-U-P-R-A, Supratone. And it is an alder body, just like a lot of other Fender bodies and Squire bodies, it's, it's alder wood. It basically came with the routes pre-cut, as you can see in the picture here, but I had to do all the sanding, the finishing, and the drilling, and, and all of that stuff. Next up is the neck, which I got from a company called Allen Eden, and I purchased that off a of Reverb, and that came with the headstock as a paddle shape, which you could then cut into any shape that you wanted, and obviously I'm going after the, the Jazzmaster look and feel, so I wanted to, a nice uh, classic style jazz master headstock and that said let me let me talk about the uh the headstock for a second i happen to be a graphic designer by trade so i basically did a spoof on the jazz master headstock logo that's on the fender ventera 60s jazz master i'm calling this one the jazz meister um again i'm it it's inspired by a Fender guitar. Everything is made to look like a, a Jazzmaster guitar, but it's definitely not a Fender. I, I'm not trying to fool anybody into thinking it's a, a, an actual Fender. So uh, I just had a little bit of fun with the headstock. And for the headstock, the process that I did with that was basically printing it on, on a water slide decal paper right from my inkjet printer. And I put it on in between the actual color coat and then the clear coat. So I had a lot of fun playing around with the decal and getting that to look just right. So if you want to know how I, how I did that, have a look at the second video that I'll be putting out about the uh, process of how I built everything. So I'll, I'll include that in there and show you exactly how I did it. All right, that said, um, I also changed out the nut for a bone nut. It, it's just a standard bleached bone nut I got from from eBay. The neck thickness is uh, at the nut. It's about 43 millimeters, so it's a little bit wider than my Squire Classic Vibe 70s Jaguar. And the profile of the neck, I would say, is a little bit deeper C shape. So it, it's definitely a C shape, but it's it got a little bit more thickness to it. 
and uh, it's just right for, for my hands and I'm really enjoying the, the thickness of it. The frets on here are, are, are medium jumbo, a little bit, um, little bit on, the, on the big side. I think they're about just right, so I'm, I'm liking them. I, I went with the dot inlays and it also has them up here as well. It has the, the truss rod adjustment up here does not have the what they call the skunk stripe on the back which I'm totally cool with this this had a slight matte finish on the back of it I may uh, go back and put a little bit more varnish on there uh, I like it matte as well I like that feeling of of just uh, smooth almost the bare wood but obviously you don't want to go just to the bare wood because you want something to protect it from from uh, moisture and warping and that kind of thing so it is definitely sealed but it's a very light coat and um, like i said i might add a little to that later on down the road and then for the tuners i basically went with almost exactly the same thing that i have on my squire 70s classic vibe jaguar it's almost the exact same thing they're the cluson style um, vintage style tuners where you, you put the string right down through the middle and then wind it around it, which I absolutely love that style of, of tuner. And um, a lot of guys I know, they swear by the locking tuners. I've, I've never really felt the need to, to go with a locking tuner. I've always had pretty good luck with these style of tuners. And, and these are particularly my favorite. Um, um, I've just never really had any tuning stability issues but if you want to go for a locking tuners for for your uh jazz master style guitar build go right ahead um for me on this one this is this is what i chose all right let's talk the pickups the pickups i purchased from a company called guitar fetish you may or may not have heard of guitar fetish they sell a lot of budget friendly guitars and guitar parts and that sort of thing um, i have no experience with them prior to now i did some research and i saw that they had a a jazz master pickup which is supposed to be faithful to the to the original 60s style pickup so i that's what i purchased it's pretty budget friendly as i said the neck pickup i chose their vintage wound jazz master pickup just a basic jazz master pickup for the the bridge i chose their overwound vintage jazz master pickup and the difference there is obviously it's overwound it's a hotter pickup i always feel like bridge pickups are a little bit thinner sounding so that's just personal taste so I, I wanted something that had a little bit more punch for the bridge pickup so that's why I chose the the overwound uh, they these are the quick plug system from guitar fetish again I don't know if you're familiar with that style of pickup basically what it is is it has a plug right up underneath the pickup and you can easily change out pickups to any other one of their quick plug system pickups and just easily swap it out. You can literally pull it up, unplug it, and pop in the, the, other, the other pickup. That said, they do install just like regular pickups. Right from that plug, it has the two leads, your hot and your ground, just like any other pickup, you have to solder that in. So for the neck pickup, I get about 7.6K output. And for the bridge pickup, this is the overwound pickup, I get 13.1K, which is a pretty healthy output and I'm very happy with it. Like I said, it sounds great. Uh, maybe, maybe later on after doing this video, I'll do a review of these guitar fetish pickups and once I've had a chance to really play with them for, for a little bit longer. But uh, first impressions of them, they, they sound awesome. I'm super happy with them. Not to get ahead of myself for the end of the video where I give my impressions, but uh, all right, let's talk about the bridge. The bridge is an actual fender part. It's a basically a, a vintage Mustang style bridge, just like I have on my other offset guitar. The, I know I've mentioned it a couple of times, the, the, the Squire Classic Vibe Jaguar. It's pretty similar to that, but the difference is it has multiple string grooves across the saddle. That gives you the option to dial in the string spacing a lot more precisely. Right, the pick guard, it's again i purchased this off of of ebay it's just a, your standard tortoise shell red tortoise shell three ply pick guard for jazz master nothing fancy about that so for the tremolo system i purchased one from a company called all parts and i got that off of ebay as well and 
This one also features the string lock mechanism, just like on a lot of Fender Vintage style guitars. The strap buttons are also Fender parts. They're just standard Fender strap buttons, nothing fancy about those. Purchased those off of eBay as well. The knobs I purchased from a company called True Custom Shop. I got that off of eBay. And these feature silver lettering and numbers on it. And they're just your basic Fender style knobs, just like you'd see on a Stratocaster or that sort of thing. Now the electronics, these I purchased all separately and I was looking for obviously some, some deals on the electronics. And uh, uh, it's your, this is just your basic standard three-way switch. For the pots, for the tone pot, I have a, uh, an A500K um, tone pot. For the volume, it's a B500K. And for the, um, the jack, it's just, your, it's just a standard mono jack. And then for the rhythm circuit, um, standard Fender um, rhythm selector switch. And for the roller pots, the, uh, I have a one meg for the volume and a 50K for the tone, which is pretty, pretty standard Fender specs for that, for the rhythm circuit. And I ended up using the Gavit vintage style cloth pushback wiring for the uh, for the for the wires it's not what i started with originally but let's just say i had a little bit of trouble with the electronics it was, it was a lot trickier than i than i anticipated uh, neck plate that's another area where i had a bit of a difficulty and again i talk about that on the second video um, this is your just your basic uh, neck plate with the four bolts the bolts are actually from a fender neck plate kit but the the plate itself is just a, a generic chrome plate again i don't have any uh, fender logoed parts on on the guitar anywhere so all right let's talk paint i did uh, some research and some trial and error and all the paints that i bought i got from home depot in the uh it's the rust oleum line of paints so these are like five dollars a can and um, I, everything from the primer to the, to the clear coat, uh, with the exception of the clear metallic sparkle that I added to it. And again, I'll, I'll go over all of my process with the paint in my second video, but um, just, just a quick rundown of it. Um, um, the, the primer, and then I added the color, which you see here. And then over top of that, this I got, from Amazon, it was a special order deal. And it's literally just the clear coat with a little bit of sparkle in it. Like I said earlier, I was going after that Fender Ventura's 60s Jazz Master and it has that color that's called Ice Blue Metallic. And I was trying to give it just a faint little hint of, of sparkle to it, just a faint little metallic flake in the finish. And I, I feel like I, I hit that pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, again, if you want the whole process, uh, stick around for, for video number two. Um, that's, that'll be coming shortly once, once I get it all edited and everything. So, so yeah, I believe that covers all the pieces and parts that I, that I put into the guitar. Thank mm -hmm. you.
So the total cost, I, I came in at about $515 total. That's everything from start to finish, um, including tax, including shipping, all of that. So uh, in my previous video, I said that I was kind of trying to stick around the budget of, of what I would pay for that Squire J Mascus, I believe is how it's pronounced, Jazz Master. And that one... That one goes for about $500, it's 499 Everywhere that I've, I've looked, that's pretty much where that one retails for. And with taxes on that, that you're looking at about 530 
So, so again, 530 and I came in at five, about 515, including strings, uh, everything. Uh, all in all, I'm going to call that a win as far as the budget goes. <laughs> it's, I wish it was a, a little less expensive, but I'm, I'm happy with that price range. I mean, I feel like the stuff that I have in here is, is, uh, on par quality with that car that I mentioned. And the, and the great thing is this thing's mine. I, I built it from start to finish. I've actually already played this thing in public twice now at the time of this video. And I, it's just, it sounds great. I'm very happy with it. And the, mo the thing I'm most struck with is how well it, it stays in tune. I, I mean, I wanted to play a little good guitar at the end of the day. That was my goal. And it, man, it's just like, a, it's a miracle. Absolutely blown away by how this thing came out and just how lucky I was to get a nice playable guitar at the end of the day, my first time doing a doing a parts build. Um, so yeah, super geeked about that and uh, feeling very lucky. <laughs> All right. All right, one other thing I just wanna mention really quick. There's a guitar YouTuber that I've been following for a little while now. He goes by the name of Pusheen. It's P-U-I-S-H-E-E-N. It's like Pusheen, you know, with a sword. But anyway, his name is Mike Adams, and I would definitely say it's my favorite guitar YouTube channel right now. If you haven't seen that guy's stuff, definitely give it a, a look. See, he's he's definitely a wizard when it comes to Fender offset guitars and just how to set them up properly. But he has a video on what's what uh, the community calls parts masters, which is basically what I did here, building a, a jazz master out of parts. And man, I wish I'd have seen that video before I started on this one. It would have saved me some pain. So if you are considering doing that, or even if you're just interested in it, it definitely check that video out. A lot of awesome uh, um, tips and, and tricks. I, I definitely would have changed up the order of the way that I did things had I seen that video first. I definitely check his channel out. I'll leave a link down below. So again, super happy with how it came out. Thank you guys so much for sitting through this uh, whole video and, and um, listening to my, my uh, impressions on, on this thing. Let me share this with you. Um, if you like this video, give, give it a like. Uh, post a comment. I, I love interacting with, with you guys and, and sharing this, this interest with you guys and hearing your guys' interest in it. All right. Thanks a lot. Catch you in the next one. Again, watch, watch, uh, watch video number two.